So what are you doing, Alex? Well, we need to run water and power to this garage. And I called a few directional drilling companies and the quotes were ridiculous. Like three, two, seven, maybe nine thousand. None of them firm. So we're going to do our own horizontal drilling. We're gonna be coming out and into the garage there. So we have to go through this area here. And then, there we go. So we're gonna basically come from this wall over to the garage over there. So there is in fact a hole in the bottom of this giant hole. That's basically where all the utilities are going to be coming through and give them access and then into the house. And uh, yeah, we'll be starting over here and we're going to be horizontally drilling. I'll give you an exact measurement, but about 15 to 20 feet. Cut a hole through the drywall to access how this place was built, which is the yeah. styrofoam blocks. Same thing the garage is built out of. Like a budding YouTuber. That's right. What's your channel name? Mm, excellent question. <laughs> the, the Microgreen Jungle, I think. The Microgreen Jungle? All right. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the garage is going to be used to grow microgreens. So, How cool is this? The vapor barrier was at the bottom until he dug this hole inside the hole. And just the amount of dirt that's exposed right there. He got some dripping electrical outlet. A little moisture in the drywall over here. So the sooner we can get our directional drilling done, the better. All right, I need a hammer or something to pry drywall with. All right, I have exactly what you need right here. Hey, if we're doing one thing right, it's the fact that this drywall was installed within the last year, so we don't have to worry about asbestos. Yeah. <laughs> so how is the drywall connected to the foam? Is it... Oh, it's just screws. Screws into... Well, you'll see. There's like a little plastic rib back here. Little plastic ribs in the foam. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. And then what's behind that foam and that plastic? Six inches of concrete? Yeah. And then behind that six inches of concrete, hopefully, we're dealing just with this really sandy soil. That's right. And hopefully no rocks. Hopefully no extra concrete, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now our qualifications, which is very important. Why are you listening to us two people when it comes to how to directionally drill a electrical conduit out to your garage? I've got five years of uh, Alberta oil field drilling rig experience. So, you know, drill some uh, over a kilometer deep holes out there directionally. Didn't really do much other than like scrub the rig during that period of time, but my driller knew what was going on underground. <laughs> I was a reservoir engineer for a year and a half. I what, say... what reservoir engineer things are similar to what you're currently doing? Well, you drill holes down and sideways and things don't work out the way you want them to. And So that's ways. pretty much exactly what we're doing right now, except for the things don't work out the way you want them to thing, because this is going to go perfectly. That's right. That's right. So that should like be a launching point. I mean, yeah, that's a big enough like hole to start with, right? I'd say that's a good sized hole. Is there any way you can tell where the seam in that is so we can avoid rebar? I think it's, so this is the bottom and then there's 16 inches tall. Okay. So you have a measuring tape. Uh, Here's your tape. Seam should be. Cause you said we can, we can go through at the seams or right in the middle of the block, right? Yeah. So that's a seam and that's a seam. So you pretty much nailed it. Dead center of that hole should avoid rebar. Should, yeah. If we go eight inches above, if we, like, if we took that as our target, kind of. Okay. So, yeah, like, right. 
Okay, so to get through that six inches of concrete, uh, what we have here is the hammer drill. And the idea is we're going to drill a circle of small holes and then sort of smash it all out with a jackhammer bit attachment. We should upgrade the bit length. All right. Yeah. If that's a rib, yeah. if that's a rib, chances are the rebar is up against it. Like I did put some vertical rebars in. So I think if we go over here somewhere is like the middle. Okay. And then I don't know. Yeah. Three, three inch, like kind of. I don't know. Yeah, and then we'll just chip it out and then somehow get a two inch conduit through it. I'm kind of curious how long it takes to go through six inches of reasonably cured it's concrete. Soft ish. Well, a year ago you poured this? Start with the octane. Oh, we can like charge another one as we do it. I have three spare batteries, so. And we're good. We're on like. That's hammer plus drill. Hammer plus drill, that's the one. Yeah, I just go straight level as best as you can. Hey Alex, are you using the CSA approved safety squint right now? So okay. apparently these rigid tools were getting to be too good, too close to Milwaukee. And so that six amp hour powerhouse down there, oh, the octane, they discontinued the octane lineup. And uh, the next line of tools is sort of a little more lightweight, easy to handle one. So we got in at a good time to get some, some good power out of Rigid here. This thing's kicking ass. It's pretty incredible. Uh, I believe that's number 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten holes. So ten holes through about one year old concrete, six inches thick. 32 MPA. Whoa. That's like go. 40 over 4,000 PSI concrete. All right. Yeah. Go for hole 11. Will it make it? Dun, dun, dun. That's insane. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> One more maybe? Yeah, full 12. I mean, it's above my head, so it's a little hard on the shoulders. Like it, it's tiring, but like the tool's doing the work. Cool. It's just holding it up, right? I'm yeah. not really pushing. I'm thoroughly impressed with that. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a hell of a lot better than the hand to do, that's for sure. There we go. almost all the way through. I'm just letting the tool cool off a little bit. And we figured, hey, while we let it cool off, let's clean this out a little bit with the chop back, which is being stored in a fairly damp location and does not currently work. So we're gonna investigate because this chop back is pretty much the entire, uh, it's the entire directional drilling operation, <laughs> to be completely honest. Progress report, we have made it through the hole. There's the foam on the far side, but we need a shop vac for the directional drilling to continue. Progress uh, report on the shop vac mm -hmm. is, we're gonna hope that this switch right here 
uh, is broken and we're going to directly wire it. So carry on, Alex. Self-taught Sparky. Most residential electrical is pretty, uh, pretty much just this. And when you're halfway into the job, it's good to check and make sure it's unplugged. Yep. Safety third. That's technically the hot, so if I plug that in, you get a little zap, right? Yeah, wait 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, we've got the end in hand here. We are behaving ourselves. All right, clear? Clear. Let's see if noise happens. Or sparks. Uh, there. Filming and... Uh, uh, you and I, sir? are directionally drilling now. Directional drilling and vacuum repairs. This is my dust mask. Actually a really good use for this for once. So we're pretty much uh, land dredging here. Without a permit for land dredging. No, no, I'm the uh, mineral rights holder for the first few inches of soil. It's a knife down there. All right. So with our newly repaired shop vacuum, that is basically causing suction. And then this end here, we've got a coupler with some holes sort of hacksawed out of it. And I've stabbed it into the sand and it's already sort of sands crumbling into the inside. So fire up that uh, shop vacuum, Alex. Mm. See what happens to all this sand. Good progress. That's fast. Huh. Well, seems to be working. It's almost in uh, two feet. All right. So each one of these was a 10 foot piece that Alex cut into five foot sections. So do we need to, sorry, in the... We can jam it in further. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit cramped for uh, filming, but now that, like once it's all the way in, which is right there, that's five feet. And it's working amazingly. And it's all just going through this sort of light sandy soil. So how cool is that? So we've emptied the shop vacuum one time. It seems like we're gonna probably empty that thing once per five foot long section of uh, two inch conduit. And uh, this is part number two. So when that gets to the wall, we will be 10 feet into our 18 feet uh, horizontal drill here. So, uh, how many dollars an hour are, are we saving here? What do you think? Well, I got a few quotes for this and they were between three to seven, kind of 9,000. Um, but none of them were firm. So somewhere in the range of like, if this takes three hours, maybe a thousand to three thousand dollars an hour. All right. Yeah. I'd say we've got ourselves a little business here. Fire up the shop vacuum and let's get drilling. No switches needed. 
This thing's just going like crazy. That's amazing. Just uh, cleaning out the hole a little bit, circulating, as they would say on the rig. <laughs> this is the second five foot section. So we are into that wall about nine feet, halfway there. Let's see what we got for our second emptying of the shop vac. That filter doesn't look too bad. Like, I don't think we really need to knock it out much. Yeah, I could give it like, well. Give it a tap just to maximize suction. But yeah, like a, quite a decent amount of dirt. Uh, pretty neat. I don't but want yeah. to stir up too much dust. That's probably good. Yeah. And then it's it's getting harder now. so. By myself, it's, it's you know, you got to work up a bit of a sweat to keep going because there's just more wall friction as we go in. I think the couplers as you go, probably that middle coupler is just knocking dirt loose. So I, I pulled it back as far as I could get to clean out the hole as much as possible. But this next one, we won't be able to do that. So it's going to get a little trickier, but I so far it looks like we're going to make it through no problem. Shout out to the episode sponsor today, uh, Sears. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> we ended up with a bit of a plug at the end. I believe it's from hitting the frozen ground at the end because we're getting right close to the edge. Yep. So we're pulling the pipe out. We've, we're tripping pipe, as they would say on the drilling rigs. This is our final piece. Out it comes. Oh, it's heavier than the last ones. That's ice, ice cold ground there. We've clearly snapped our bit. We were kind of bashing it in at the end. Now, where's that screwdriver or something? I'm holding it. Ah, uh, here we go. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that is brittle, brittle metal, whatever it is. I think it's aluminum, right? Steel wouldn't snap that easy. Yeah, I have no idea. It looks galvanized, but yeah, it's probably aluminum. But yeah, so dig this out. <laughs> And again, the reason we did this is we thought we were close enough to the end when we got a plug that we could just pound it right through. Uh, not the case. So we ended up just getting a much worse plug. But yeah, super cool. <laughs> yeah, so this will clean out pretty easily. Just a little bit of uh, stabbing at it with a screwdriver required. And then, yeah, we'll reload the drill string and uh, pretty much ready to come out the other side now. Woo! Shan't be long now. This line, right even to that, is where we got stuck last time. Alex, what's your guess? My guess is right around here. Okay, so we're going to say there. Put an A, put an A. So this is Alex. Oh, yeah. That's our guess. And then I don't know how far the frost has gotten in or how cold it's been, but that's, that's exactly seven inches. So I'm just going to go six inches. And I'm going to go Kyle right there. So I think we're going to break through here. Alex thinks we're going to break through here. Let's see where we are. Yep. We uh, This is the final pipe stuck back in. We've cleaned everything out. Sort of did a little tripping pipe there. Throw back to the rigs and... Uh... All right. <laughs> the only wrench in the plan could be if the garage is that way and not that way. Hmm. <laughs> I think we were right at the Kyle mark. Six inches. So... I'm going to go to the other end, turn on my flash. Oh, hang on. How do I do that? Okay, I got a light on. Let's go look. Mm, that's a good way to fall into the abyss.
Here, uh, push it out, Alex. Okay. I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Ha ha! I'm gonna climb down there and video it. <laughs> it's so cool. This is like the world's least safe ladder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Some poly. <laughs> I just slipped on the poly. It falls down in the hole. So yeah, right here. We just cracked oh, dude. the end off right there. That is so cool. Wow. Man, that's so... I guess there's just a shop back in there so we won't see the light, but. So you have a conduit out in your little garage pit and you've also trapped me somehow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this very awkward ladder. But yeah. Can Are you, you happy, that? Alex? Did, did you get a thumbs up here? Definitely a thumbs up. All right. So that is how you horizontally drill or directionally drill if you put a little... I'm curious how well you could actually turn a drill string just by hand like this. But we did two-inch conduit. And I guess by the end there, it was probably right about 17 feet and through sort of a soft sandy soil, didn't seem to hit too much stuff. We got one plug up, so we had to pull the drill string back out, clean it out, and then go again. But uh, yeah, if, if you have something like, I'd say 20 feet's about the most you'd really wanna do. Although if you pulled the string out and went back and forth a few times, you could probably loosen things up and do better. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of breath missed here. But yeah. anyways, we'll get back inside and uh, discuss our results. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Much warmer in your my hole that has a hole in it. My duck hole. <laughs> well, yeah, so 17 feet, roughly. Yeah, a pretty well, yeah. At least. It sticks out like a foot in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> And I can just turn the vacuum on to suck all the mice out when I'm ready to put a cable in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's cool. Awesome. I guess, yeah, we just have to disconnect and clean up and you are set. How are you going to, um, like, is that hole basically just going to get filled with spray foam once you cut the conduit to the right length? Yeah. Or I might try and pump, like, maybe something Some a little grout? better than spray foam. Maybe, yeah, or, like, maybe PL Premium or something. Okay. I don't know. Well, if you, like, between the conduit and the concrete, if you just squirted a tube of PL in there, then would, you, you would... Waterproof it. Yeah, rock sort of. solid. And then just, yeah, spray foam to fill in where your foam's missing. Or what do you, you call it? Use that pink styrofoam behind you and then cut a block and then just spray foam around the cracks. Yeah, spray foam would be good enough, yeah. Yeah. No, perfect. And the then... Tech, tech cable probably just run it, like... Yeah, so it'll just run across the wall along here and then into the house. Yeah, I could notch out the drywall, but uh, whatever. Yeah. Sweet, man. Well, we did good. Um, to anyone who watched the whole video, I hope you learned something because it, I certainly did. It's kind of, a, <laughs> we were not sure this was going to work at all. Um, really lucky we didn't hit any major rocks or anything like that, but it's with a little creativity. You know, you can, you can modify this a little bit to uh, be pretty effective. Um, my channel's typically focused on gold mining, stuff like that. There'll be more jet boating videos and gold mining videos coming up eventually. So thank you for your patience to any subscribers who are watching. And to the rest of you looking how to horizontally drill a hole, thank you for watching. Cheers. <laughs>